seen your picture, your name and lights above it. This is your big debut. It's like a dream come true. So don't you smile for the camera. I know they're gonna love it. Welcome Cut Lords fans. <laughs> we are here for... <laughs> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Turtles. Mutant Mayhem. Yes. And I'm... <laughs> And the reason why we're seeing Steely Dan is because they, the De La Soul crew takes that riff and puts it in their song, I Know. That's the album right there. Mm -hmm. One of the best albums of the 90s. Probably a lot of people actually put that in the top 10 albums of the 90s. Yeah. Definitely in the top 10 rap albums of the 90s. But um, uh, but they take uh, Steely Dan and they put the song in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, it, so watching this movie, I'll just say a lot of nostalgia. Uh -huh. so, now, yeah, if we're living his turtle days. Yes, my turtle days. If you're not uh, <laughs> familiar with our channel, we are the cult lords we do movie reviews try to do that every monday once a week and then do except when they're difficult to edit oh yes wait for our gran turismo <laughs> gotta put the quality out, out there yeah um and then uh we do trailer reactions also throughout the week so make sure to hit subscribe hit the like button we always need double digit likes and then tell us in the comments did you like teenage mutant ninja turtles Mayhem. Mutant mayhem. Mutant mayhem. Yes. Um, and then we'll we'll tell you what we think. Mayhem. Now, if you're also new to the channel, we always like to start off our movie reviews with a cocktail. So or mm -hmm. a drink of some sort. What are we drinking We're today? We're doing in honor of the Japanese way of the ninja warrior. Okay. We are doing Japanese craft gin, Roku gin, distilled in Japan. Of and when I wanted to try this, because obviously it fits the theme, but it's using J Japanese but Botanicals, which you don't usually get in gin, like Sakura leaf. So I like Sencha tea, Yuzu pe uh, peel. Yes. Sancho pepper. Yeah. Sakura flower. I do like gin, but I usually have to mix gin. I don't drink gin straight up. We'll see what this tastes we'll like. We'll see what this tastes straight like. Straight up. Straight up. Now tell me. Do you really want to love oh, oh, oh. Is it sweet? You no, it's smell, very botanical. You smell a lot of like, but odd botanical. It's not like the juniper, or like the classic gin, right? I feel like I'm walking through a Japanese garden. You definitely smell some florals in there, and I can hear the the little cup filling up with water, and then going, <laughs> you know, like in uh, what was it, Kill Bill? Yes. So, woo, hit strong. Woo. Ooh. Oh, that's definitely going to shake the willies out of you. Oh, oh, that's got my samurai coming through. All right. Wow, that is a strong gin. Woo. I mean, I've, we've had gin before, and I've, you know, just over time, I've liked like Bol Genève and other gin. That's that's actually a really good gin. I mean, yeah. it's strong. Oh, it's strong. It definitely needs some mixing with it because I it need is so to potent. Mix with that. Yeah, put some definitely. more ice in there if you're gonna put any. I don't ice even in. have ice in there. So, all right, all right. Well, good call. This is for our ninja movie. Yes. I too could be ninja. No. <laughs> I too could be ninja. <laughs> all right, all we're right. gonna put it in. All right. I almost a ninja. Dang, before we reveal what we thought of this movie, we always like to hear what the general population feels about this movie. Although we should warn people. Oh, we do. We need to put a spoiler warning out there. If you haven't seen this movie... You suck. And Well, not necessarily. We, I didn't see this movie until yesterday, so <laughs> did I suck until yesterday? You suck. You suck. Mm. So, uh, mm. so if uh, you have not seen this movie and you don't want anything spoiled for you, we got a big alert for you. Spoiler alert! Spoiler! We got a big alert for you. Spoiler alert! Spoiler! You, if you don't want to, the spoilers ruined for you, hit pause, go watch the movie, and then come back. See if you feel the same way we feel. All right, you've been warned. We're about to go into spoilers. But let's see what the general population feels. Now, Dane, yes. we always consult the Rotten Tomato scores. 
Yes. Did you stay away from it? I did. Okay. Although I see the back of this, but I wrote my score before. Oh, okay. So you know it's certified fresh. So I'm being fresh. fair. I saw that yeah. it was on the, on All right. the, we'll just show it for the audience sake. What? Go ahead. It says certified fresh. Certified fresh. All right. So what do you think the critics gave this? Well, so, uh, I mean, and I'm going to completely base it not on what that means, because I'm not sure sometimes what that means, but I think the critics probably gave it a, like a 75. And then the audience, audience, I think, gave it a, like a, I think a 95. Mm. I think it went, I think the audience was rather pleased with this movie. So, Dane. Personally. The, How wrong am I? The critics <laughs> gave this a 95. Oh, my God. Is it, is it? Yeah. <laughs> I thought critics usually are going to go harsh on these kind of movies, but go ahead. Yeah. It went 95. Wow. And then the audience went 90. Ah, so the opposite, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So well, that's interesting. Yeah. And that, it, it always throws me off. I mean, I guess if critics are looking at purely from a technical <laughs> storytelling standpoint, yeah, it was a great movie. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter what the critics think. It doesn't matter what the audience think. Yeah. It matters what the cult lords think. We have the uh, the ability to, to make things we have move. We cornered the market on uh, movie reviews. Yes. Yeah, we are just so high in demand. <laughs> there are about 625 people that hinge on what we say. We're about still waiting for a YouTube sorting algorithm <laughs> yeah. to figure it out, to get a clue All right. on well, our ratings. All right. Well, let's All tell right. you what we thought. Give a quick shout out to our accounting firm, Toloit and Douche. Uh, if you need an accounting firm, make sure to Google Toloit and Douche. Then come back and tell us what you find because we, we really can't find anything. So. Yeah. All right. So on the count of three, Dane, what is your score? One, two, three. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Needed Casey Jones. I like turtles. Eight, four plus. 1.0 with kids? Yes. Okay. So for me, watching alone, 8.4. <laughs> but if I had, like, some little kids with me, like, but yeah. they're all grown up now, but if they were little, and we went and saw this, probably add a point to it. Oh, yeah. See well, I can see that. I mean, yeah. that's cartoonish in a lot of ways, but but well done. Oh, me. yeah. So, cool. One, One two, two, three. three. <laughs> coordinate this by the way <laughs> <laughs> all right he's back yep all so, right so what did you think of this movie uh, night I, went, two, yeah, I went night two i kind of gave a hint already i mean i thought it was well written the graphics were really interesting i mean i think you can this see an, this animation style is different yeah this animation style was almost like a combination of like real world with cart with like with uh uh comic Right. You know, like, and what they were trying to do was really pull in, like, original, uh, I think it was Laird of the guys who did this. But you could see, like, remember when you'd see lights that had little, like, print pricks and everything uh -huh. out of it? And that's exactly what's happening on the bus here and some of these comics up here. And so I think that's what they did that was really cool about this is that they made you feel like you were reading, like, a live-action comic mm -hmm. the whole time with, obviously, animated. Right. And, um, and then I think the storyline was great. I mean, it was an oral origin story. Right. I mean, I went. I would have went higher, but I still thought, God, they're why are they you know, catering to the kids all the time? Come on, like, I want to see some original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, right. blood and guts, and you know, punching out bad guys. So the, I mean, if you don't know, the original comics are actually pretty graphic, right, mm -hmm. and pretty, pretty yeah. bloody. But uh, they're all in black and white, right. in the originals. But you know, Dave, they're not going to make Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <sighs> like that i mean i hope they would eventually that's the way it started and i this might go in that direction i don't know i mean the comics, i think this is for kids and if you get too graphic yeah. violent then you're going to turn a lot of parents off and then the word's going to get out and not as many people will go see it and then you're deadpool yeah yeah <laughs> so yeah we'll just keep it with deadpool or something like that so no i first of all well, i thought the animation style was very different i mean 
I feel like there was elements that I've seen before, but then I felt like there was elements that I really haven't seen this before, like th yeah. the way they're animating this. They were they were definitely cutting edge in the yeah. sense that they were progressing the animation style. Because I, I wouldn't say this looked like Japanese anime. I wouldn't say this looked like computer generated uh, like what you see now with like, you know, Shrek or Tangled or, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, you know, whatever these movies are. CGI animation. CGI yeah. kind of animation. I mean, I felt like there was an element where it looked drawn, like hand drawn. Mm -hmm. But then there was elements of computer in it too, you know what I mean? So um, I, I, I really dug it. I dug the animation. Yeah. And then, yeah, you know. They actually did a good job of making you feel empathy for the teenagers at the beginning when they were oh, sitting yeah. down and uh, they, first of all, they robbed a convenience store to get food. <laughs> but then, you know, they're, they're like observing the human world in a way that they're like, you know what, what was great was they were playing Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh yeah, they were watching it. Watching <laughs> it like in the park or something. It was, yeah. And they were like, man, maybe someday, the humans will love us like they love Ferris Bueller. Yeah, you know, like... Oh snap! Oh wow, that vest is a choice. Huh? I wish I had hair like that. I wish I had hair. Period. You did go bald at a young age. Is this high school, like in real life? Yeah, you go to high school, you can just hijack a parade whenever you want. Yeah. But in high school, you can just stop a parade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because they were playing <laughs> Dr. Shea, right? Yeah. <laughs> you thought that that's how it works in high school. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that, but like you know, it felt heartwarming as you know you listen to right. them and watch them. Oh, you definitely got pulled into them as as a character. I yeah. Mean, I think where we maybe they kind of fell off a little bit is that they were grouping them. I mean, they kind of like stood out in some form or another, but they grouped them together. And so all the emotions that you as an audience member kind of was like collectively being put into them. Right. Because like, none of them, they never went off and did their own thing, right? right. They were all independent. Or well, all together. yeah, they were because, you know, they'd grown up where they can't do their own thing. Yeah. You know, Splinter, their rat dad, played by Jackie Han Chan. Man, yeah. Dude, that makes it louder. Ah! Boys, where have you been? I've been freaking we're, out. We're sorry, Dad. Oh, Listen, it was this um, one. Shanda. It was this cat. Uh, you know, had bad experiences with humans. Of course, any normal rat probably would. You know, to be I honest know. with you, if last you're a stray I, rat. Last time I talked to a rat, they were not happy with the humans. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So because of his, you know, experiences, he's like never ever ever talk to humans. Right. Don't go in their world. It's only bad. It didn't go well. Oh my god, it's a rat man! Oh, rat man. Oh. Everybody look, it's a rat man! It's a rat man. It's just a bad Mickey Mouse costume. It's real! I touched it! I touched it! So, you know, they yeah. listened. But, you know, now they're teenagers and now they're they're wanting to buck the, the trends of what dad teaches. Leonardo plus had his eyes on some new feminine uh, what was her name? April. Oh, when she was April O'Neil. April O'Neil. When they uh, by accident hit her in the head with a morning star. Isn't that her name? April O'Neil. Yeah, it's April O'Neil. Because I think I went to college with a girl named April. Oh, really? Yeah. So like when she uh, said her so name, funny. I was like, "What? Yeah, April O'Neil? April O'Neil? Yeah, yeah, it and, is. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, Casey Jones, who you saw me cite in my thing, he's another character that shows up, and he's supposed mm. to be making fun of vigilantes, but he's always in hockey outfits, and like he'd wear a ski mask, oh. and he'd attack him with various sports equipment mm. that he had in a golf bag on his back. What's the? Uh, he was not in this. What was the Grateful Dead song about Casey Jones? Driving that train, how cocaine. And that, they more. probably are referencing that, to tell you well, that. although that's an they old could thing. Be. So, Casey Jones is kind of an old engineering thing. Yeah. yeah. So, but I thought of Grateful Dead when I heard mm. that. So, um, no, everybody, uh, everybody did well for, for their acting, um, their voices. Um, all, all the kids actually sounded like kids. Right. You know what I mean? You know, are they all kids in true life? They are. So they're all in the okay. So they got that. This is the one that just got an Oscar. Iowa Debris, she's the one who, and she was the host on SNL last mm. weekend. Mm, okay. Rose Byrne was Leatherhead. Mm. Leatherhead. John Cena. So they had a lot of people stepping in here. Well, I knew Ice Cube was Superfly. Superfly. Uh, oh, I Paul know Rudd. Giancarlo Esposito was in this. He was yeah. uh, the bad guy in Mandalorian, right? Yeah. Post, <laughs> Post Malone, Hannibal Burris, Paul Rudd. 
Did you see that, by the way, they introduced and introducing Paul Rudd? Oh, again. really? No, I didn't see that. And introducing Paul Rudd as yeah. in the credits. Then they had Seth Rogen and Maya Rudolph. So. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of uh, voice talent, you know, in this. And, yeah. you know, it was, it was good. I mean, you know, you had the bad guys that wanted the formula. Then you had, like, another set of bad guys that were less trying to, you know, take out the mutants or whatever, right? It was like kind of like two sets of bad guys in this, right? Yeah, well, there was the original one right. who was trying to get the, the mutant formula in the first formula. place and yeah. then convert them into super soldiers. Yeah. HQ, anything to add, Cynthia? This mission is of the utmost importance. Failure will be frowned upon. And then there was the Superfly guy yeah. who grew up, Gat had his gang with him of yeah. all other rejects and decided yeah. I'm going to bring down the entire human race with yeah. my... Yo, come on, y'all. Let's get the goods. Ah! Yo! Ah! Exploding uh, ooze bomb over the globe. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So, you know, the action was good and yeah. predictably, you know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles take down the big bad guy. Got it! <laughs> the big combination of horses and mosquitoes and, and what else? Whales. Well, is there anything in the ocean? Rhinoceros or I something I thought it like was that. all in the ocean. It was all ocean. No, there was ho- horses in it, too. Well, Remember at the end, like, oh, like all those horses, like, took Yeah, off. that confused me, because yeah. the, the ooze thing exploded in the ocean. Yeah. And so it was like, but, I think but it they weren't seahorses. They were regular horses. No, it kept gathering stuff as it went along, Oh, as right? it went along? Yeah, because oh. it, like, took on a mosquito. It took on, or, like, part of a mosquito. It had a, yeah. I think it had, like, a rhinoceros in there. It had horses. had a whale. Yeah, so it had, oh, yeah, like, you're right, because it went by the zoo. Yeah. It, yeah, yeah, I forgot yeah. about that part, yeah. So so, um, so that was, I, I mean, I thought they did some uh, clever uh, storytelling in that, like, how, like, they probably brought out more of the ooze concept that, you know, they never really explored that that much in the comic. Right. But I read every single one of them. But, I mean, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, they did such a great job with the storytelling. And I was really, I mean, did you like the ending? Yeah. I mean, I was satisfied with that. Yeah. Whatever they were like, well, they yeah. get to go back to they get to go to high school and they show up with hoodies and <laughs> yeah. backpacks, walk in the door, and then every kid just looks at them and they're like, "What's going to happen here?" And then they're like, "Yeah." You know, yeah, I mean, although I will say, I think you've lost your uh, anonymity. <laughs> uh, well, they did get rid of the mask when they went in. It's like, you know, yeah. ninjas are supposed to be hidden, and they're just the only four yeah. mutant turtles out there. And they're in high school now, having a good time. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, would any girl date a turtle mutant? Would you date a well, that was a big would you date a female mutant turtle? <laughs> I guess if she's hot. She's a hot tortoise. (laughs) Your shell or mine. (laughs) Yes, right. I I mean, that was one thing that was an undercurrent uh, or subtext in this storyline about acceptance. Yeah. Right. I mean, because the whole mutant thing and pretty much that was the impetus for all the forward story moving in this thing where like turtles wanted to get accepted. They wanted to go to high school. Then they ended up, oh, I want to like date, you know, he, Leonardo was, had the hots for April and she was like, well, I'll just go along with you guys because I'm I'm the girl who pukes on camera you know like she had a backstory which I thought was nice that they added it in there and then you got the other guys all not feeling accepted Mm -hmm. and then um and then that was the big thing right they all yeah what was the the skater guy what was his uh bebop yeah what was he a creature he was a gecko A gecko, okay. Yeah, so that's right. Paul Rudd introducing Paul Rudd as the yeah. gecko. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and then the whole thing with uh, that was their big scheme. If we go down and take down this monster, everyone will love us. Right. 
<laughs> I mean, if only it was that easy, but yeah. you know, they, they came up with a satisfying ending. I and was, then every, I was... every human had to help them get the ooze over. Like, yeah. the, oh no, here's the cab driver. Get in, hop in, get in, I'll take uh, it. And the skater's like, yeah. come on. And yeah. everyone's like, let's do it collectively as a team. Yes. Yeah, so that was cool. I mean, yeah. you know, I, I I felt, especially from a, a young kid standpoint, or a more. You think Batman would ever take that kind of help? <laughs> no, he would never do that. Remember when people tried to help Batman in uh, what was it, Dark Knight? Uh, like they dressed up as Batman. Oh, the vigilante. And they go, well, they go. What's the difference between you and me? <laughs> he goes, I don't wear hockey gear or something like yeah. that. Hockey pads. Don't let me find you out here again. We're trying to help you. I don't need help. Not my diagnosis. What gives you the right? What's the difference between you and me? I'm not wearing hockey pants. Well, in that particular, to your point. Yeah. And that's one thing, that was my point about the Casey Jones, is the movie had nothing really serious ever happened to anybody. Right. You know, there was no killing. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, people got punched, but there was no blood. Right. Nobody left. Whereas Batman, you know, that's real life. You know, right. hockey vigilantes uh, in Batman costumes are going to get killed, which right. we saw happening. Yeah. So yeah. that was the thing is, is I was like, Okay, you know, you did a good job. Let's make the next movie a little bit more serious because nobody really got hurt in this entire movie. You never felt peril. Yes. Yeah. Well, we'll see because now they set it up at the end there with Shredder, mm -hmm. right? Bring me the Shredder. The main villain of all the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle series and comics and stuff like that so yeah so they they really didn't show him until the very end so on any of these covers no he's not any of them no so but yeah oh that's right you better swing that over here we got our nunchucks I got my katana Whoa! yeah you never worked with these before in college my friend chris smith mm -hmm own several pairs of these and he had them in our dorm several pair of yeah them. like one just, was just not the, enough <laughs> this was during the late 80s yeah if he had nunchucks in the dorm today he'd probably be expelled from school yeah. i bet they would consider this you a holy weapon. A weapon yeah i mean but it is technically like two sticks on a chain there's no cutting edge this is illegal like to is it illegal? carry around like as a weapon, I think. You know what I mean? So. Okay. But anyways. So what would, he, what would had, you guys do with it? So he had these in the dorm. So like when we were, like he wasn't in my dorm room, but like we would play cards a lot at night, a bunch of guys. And we would go to different dorm rooms to play cards. And when we were in his dorm room, you know, I would take this and I would just, you know, just get used to doing this. You know what I mean? I, I don't know if that's even on camera here, but just, just going around like this, right? And then you would do a move where, you know, you would take it behind your shoulder and you'd catch it uh -huh. and you do it real slow and you do it a hundred times. And then you're starting to speed it up, doing it, speeding up and doing it. And then you're speeding up and doing it. And then you, you would, we would take it around our neck, take it, you know, and do this. And we, we got pretty good. I wouldn't say I was ever an expert at this. And I did <laughs> hit my head a few times in my lifetime doing this, but, uh, we, we, uh, there was a time where I could work these decently yeah and chris smith could work them too So, oh yeah, yeah. So, but could you work them like this? No, no, I couldn't work it like this. No, never. I could only do the eye thing like Bruce Lee. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's about it. It's so. funny because those things are legendary, oh. probably because of him. I mean, mm -hmm. you never, 
How often did you ever see nunchucks in other movies? I mean, I, Bruce Lee, yes, but I don't remember really seeing them in like classic, like Iron Monkey or. Uh, oh yeah. Did they, or, like first of all, like remember uh, Enter the Ninja? Well, yeah, but that was a Bruce Lee movie. Yeah. No, no, no. That's Enter the Dragon. Enter the Ninja was oh, Franco Nero. That's right. From the yeah. 80s. And like he was the ninja, right? And that's then, right. And then uh, I think in, what was it? Uh, something, the other ninja movie was Lee Van Cleef. Remember Lee Van Cleef, the freaking. That, that was a TV the, the, though. The, no, no, there was Did a it movie. It started with a movie and, it then, it went movie a and then it went into a TV oh. show. So, uh, but yeah, um, Lee Van Cleef. Yeah, it was always funny. They, they, I mean, <laughs> even in like the early '80s, they couldn't feature like a Chinese guy, you know, to like bring bring ninjas to the masses. It had right. to be Franco Nero, the Italian uh, spaghetti western guy. Then it had Lee Van Cleef, the, also the uh, the American spaghetti western guy. So uh, it was just kind of funny. Yeah, it yeah. is funny, but. Yeah. I mean, Bruce Lee, though, set the bar high. But, oh, yeah, I don't yeah. remember it because I didn't see, I mean, I saw a bit of the Frank Nero movie, but I didn't realize he did a whole n oh, yeah. nunchuck thing. Oh, yeah. That. Okay, I didn't see the movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so, and he had the throwing stars. You know, you know, I don't know if you ever saw Bruce Lee with throwing stars, but he had throwing stars. He had the the blue. Yeah, your classic ninja. Yeah. Where, uh, what's his name? Bruce Lee tended to do more like throwing little tiny dart things. He didn't like to have stars, mm. so to say. I mean, so he would be standing here like playing and somebody would come over and he'd go, like, oof, oof, uh, oof. And it would be like small little like dart things. It wasn't like he uh, had. Because I think you're crossing over into the ninja yeah. realm when you're throwing the star and, around. And you know what? If you think about it, <clears throat> the ninja is Japanese, right? And Bruce oh, Lee well, is, is Chinese, right? Uh -huh. So, um, but yeah, the ninja had had the the dumb chucks. Hmm. Um, but uh, did they ever appear in Shogun? <laughs> They I don't, don't think right? so. I don't think so. <laughs> That's the weird yeah. thing is that they seem more of like a modern invention, but I'll bet if we re put some serious thought into that, which we'll put up here, it's like, when did nunchucks actually come into to being? And you know what's so funny is, <clears throat> as a, probably like a 10-year-old kid in my neighborhood when I lived in Louisville, Kentucky, we all decided one day we were going to make our own nunchucks. <laughs> so all of us like went like behind like where we lived was like a wooded area and we had a like a, a saw that you know somebody stole from their dad and we went out and we started cutting branches you know that were straight and then we cut our nunchucks they were not fully this size but they were like maybe about half this size yeah and then what we did was we, nail, rusted we, nails we put in nails in the end and what was it we we put like I don't think we, I think we put Some like shoe strings. It wasn't shoe strings. It was <laughs> thick string though. Okay. It was, so it was like a, a cloth string. And so, you know, it wasn't like the chains, but like we freaking had bruises all over our heads and everything. And You're like, like whoa, ow, whoa, ow, whoa, 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 whoa. Stay down, stay down, stay down. Don't try to stand up. Uh, oh, that's you, so You funny. come in with a black eye when mom's like, what, what happened? Oh, I fell off the bike. You know, <laughs> you didn't want to tell him you had a pair of nunchucks out there. Oh, my God. So, moms don't like nunchucks. No. <laughs> Nine out of ten moms disapprove. <laughs> so, all and, right. And, and, and did you ever wonder where do the, you know, so each of the turtles has their own weapons. Right. Did you ever wonder how that all came into being? Like, who picked what? I mean, Michelangelo's No, that. I didn't read the comics or follow Teenage Mutant Ninja yeah, Turtles. So Splinter assigned them all these weapons as um, a as a learning technique based on their personalities. Okay. So what are the weapons? I know nunchucks, those two like... Katanas. A katana. A katana. And then there's like those... 
those blades that like Electra uses. Yeah, those are. You know, yeah, what I mean? they're are, like the three prong they're things. They're bay or skate bays or skays. Yeah, I can't think of the name of so those. So that, that, that's and the, those are actually considered. So the thing with that one is they're more considered a defensive weapon. So you have to be very very skilled in order to make them an actual weapon. Right. They're more for defensive. Well, purposes. I would bet because they're three prong that it's meant to take off a, a sword off of somebody, right? Right. If you, if the sword is coming and you can lodge it into that, that, that gap and then turn it, maybe you could probably desword somebody or even snap the sword. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that those are three of the weapons. And What's then the, the other one? one is the bow staff. Oh, the bow staff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, all right. Well, very cool. And then multiple ninja and stars. And then the names. They pretty much show Leonardo, Michelangelo, Donatello. Wh who was Donatello in real life? Was that a painter? Yeah, these are all Renaissance painters. Okay, and then yeah. what's the other one? Uh, did you say Raphael? Oh, okay. Raphael, Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Donatello, uh, and Banksy. All right. No, just kidding. <laughs> Did you see that thing in there where it looked like Banksy? No. There was that one where they were looking up at the artwork that was like graffiti art in oh. one of the tunnels. And I swear, I was like, God, did they get Banksy to show up for this? Because it had kind of like his style when they were uh, walking through one of the tunnels and they were looking at, okay. at something. Okay. Or am I mixing up my movies? Mm. Was it the other animated? Actually, it might be uh, Ninja Turtle movie. You saw? <laughs> I was watching it intermingled with Walking Dead, and uh, it was the one where they were in the sewer. Uh, That's what it was. It was I'm sorry. it was the Walking Dead. It was the Ar Archeron Part One, Part Two in season like uh, ten or eleven, where they're uh, down in the sewers, and Maggie's with them, and Negan. And they get separated, and, uh, oh. and Daryl's by himself down a, the, another tunnel. And then he oh, sees yeah. this like Banksy thing on the wall, and I'm like, "Is that really Banksy?" Because I uh, mean, it totally kind of has. Is the that same the one look. where like it was it was a subway tunnel, and then they they go into the train, and then like the all the dead are like coming into the windows, and they're on the yeah 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 and yeah. Then, God, I remember. That was a good episode. That was Archer. a good episode. I'm only, I'm not done with Archer, 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 okay. Asheron 2 or whatever it is. Well. So sorry, I mixed up my. Uh, we're really ninja. chasing rabbits here on a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, good movie. movie. Yeah, good movie. Go see it, especially if you have kids. If you have kids, they will love this. Boys or girls, they'll love this. Um, a lot of teenage angst. Uh, yes. Yeah. So my hope is that this was the... And a freaking awesome soundtrack. So we had De La Soul. Yeah. You had Naughty by Nature. You had Tribe Called Quest. You had... Uh, who else did we have in there? Oh, they played uh, Vanilla Ice Ninja Rap, which was in the... Oh, really? Uh, which was in the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Oh, movie. Yeah, that, Remember, yeah. he was in there and he was. I've heard the song. And he's like, go, home. Ninja, go, Ninja, go. Uh, go, Ninja, go, Ninja, go. Go, Ninja, go, Ninja, go. Go, Ninja, go, Ninja, go. Did he? Yeah. <laughs> but, and then they played Four Non Blondes. Oh, you yeah. know, uh, what's up? But it wasn't Four Non Blondes. It was like somebody else sang it and then they sped it up and did a, like a mix of it or something. <laughs> but it was it was so, interesting. And actually that made half the movie was the soundtrack. The I mean, soundtrack it, it, was amazing. It set the tone the yeah. whole time. I mean, and Trent Reznor and whoever the other guy was, there was two of them that his did partner. the sound, his partner. They did such a great job pulling all this other music yeah. in and yeah. making you feel like you were part of that, that pulling you back in time. Yeah. But the funny thing is most people that watch this movie have no idea where those songs came from. Well, if you're a little kid, you're <laughs> yeah. not going to know these. Right. Oh, that's Naughty by Nature. You know, that's that's Tribe Called Quest. That's uh, Nobody knows De La Soul today. Right. And, you know, exactly. they're, they're fantastic. I mean, there was only... This album, this whole album, like, every song is good. Every song is good. So, you know, t uh, go... Go check it out. You know, it's 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 awesome. So yeah, yeah, you're no right. airplay. No, there's no channel on satellite even that plays this kind of stuff. Well, right? yeah, no, Maybe there a is hip hop also, channel or something. Yeah, like there's there's one. It's like the old school hip hop channel. They'll play this oh, stuff. Okay. Yeah, but um, oh well, yeah, I recommend it. It's good. 
Uh, but tell us down in the comments what you think. Did you like it? And what did you like about it or not like about it? Tell us. Mm. We, we love to read your comments. I, yeah. You know, it's funny is we'll, we'll go like a couple of videos and we'll get one or two comments. Then suddenly we get 30 comments and we're like, whoa, where are all these people coming from? We love it. And we, we try to answer every single one of them. So we love to hear what you have to say. Um, and then make sure to subscribe. And, and like it. So, potent, potable. Yeah. All right, Dane. How do you want to get us out of here? Boop, 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 ba doop. Boop, 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 ba doop. So, everybody, have a really good.